Just as a reminder to please mark your calendars for our next Live Fitness Friday on August 18th with Katie and Gully. To learn more or sign up, please visit parkinson.org diagonal PD health. And also today's PD Health at Home is presented by Light of Day Foundation. We want to take this moment to th uh, thank the Light of Foundation for supporting the mission of the Parkinson's Foundation. And now it is my pleasure to introduce you to today's instructor. Please meet Dr. Katie Wadlin and Dr. Tammy DeAngelis. Both are board certified geriatric clinical specialists at Healthy Aging Physical Therapy. They are passionate about working with individuals with Parkinson's disease and have extensive experience and training in this area. Katie is a Power Move certified therapist and has personal experience as a caregiver to her mother who has PD for uh, Parkinson's disease for 18 years. Tammy brings over 15 years of experience from the Boston University Parkinson's Disease Research Team as a physical therapy interventionist, where she has published numerous articles and presented extensively on the topic of Parkinson's disease and exercise. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Are we on, ready to go? Yes, you are. <laughs> All right, perfect. Thank you for joining us and for that lovely introduction for having us this July. We've had a good time making some videos for you guys. I hope you've enjoyed them. Um, like she mentioned, we're gonna take you through about 45 minutes of exercise. And we're gonna start sitting a little warm up. We're gonna do some upper body, some postural work. Then we'll start getting up out of the chair. We'll do a little bit of high intensity work, some power moves, and then some balance, and then we'll pull down. So what I'll encourage you to do is keep an eye on two things. Whoever is talking is going to be introducing the activity and also showing you the more advanced version. Whoever is not talking will be showing a modified version if you need some more support. So you can kind of pick and choose who you watch during this. So go ahead and join us. We're sitting down on a chair, nice flat feet, hands on knees, take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. One more time in and out. This time, let your arms come up with your in breath and down with your out breath. One more time up and down. Bring those hands forward, deep breath in. We're gonna open wide and close. One more time, open and close. And then do a couple of wrist circles, couple ankle pumps here, stretch it out. And we're gonna start with power moves sitting down. So I know you've seen some different power classes. I'm gonna talk about the moves as we go and as we warm up here. So you wanna start with nice grasp on the floor. So flat feet, hands on your knees. We're gonna start with the power up. So power up really focuses on anti-gravity extension. So getting up nice and tall. So we're gonna hinge forward on the in-breath, push back and open wide on the out-breath. So we're gonna do this 10 times. Forward and back. Three. Four. Five. Six, good, seven, eight, nine, one more, 10. Beautiful, hands back to knees. We're gonna start the power rock. Power rock really works on weight shifting. So as you do your rock, we're gonna come forward onto, a, onto your leg and reach up and away. I want you to think about trying to get that other cheek off the chair and reaching as far as you can with that hand. And switch. Switch. And switch. Good, we're going for 10 again. This is number three. And four. Five. Six. 
seven, eight, nine, last one, 10. Beautiful, back up nice and tall, roll those shoulders back, keep those feet wide, we're gonna twist. So twisting works on rotation through your thoracic spine, which is really important for Parkinson's disease. So arms nice and wide, hands are spread really wide. We're gonna turn, drop that knee, connect the hands, open wide again. So a lot of people, when they do this, when they start, they try to bring their hands with them. I want you to focus on out in between. Ready? Twist, open, twist, open. Good, two, three, four, Make some noise with that clap five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. One more. Ten. Back to the middle. Walk your feet into the middle. Take a nice deep breath. Moving on to the power step. Stepping works on transition. So if you are the kind of guy or girl or whatever you may be trying to get somewhere and your feet feel stuck, this is the exercise for you. So we're gonna try to lift really, really big over a speed bump and then bring it back. And think about your hand connecting that same line and back. One. Good. Two. You can feel free to stomp. Three, four, five, six, seven, almost there. Nine, one more, ten. Beautiful. So those are the four moves. You're gonna see them again. But first we're gonna work on some postural stability and strength with Tammy. Great, thank you, Katie. Sure. What I love about those power moves is that it works on both the amplitude of movement, so you're getting nice big movements, but also just movement throughout your whole body. And yep. a lot of the areas that people with Parkinson's can have stiffness and be sort of in that flex position. So those movements really um, target a lot of Parkinson's specific problems. So that's why we love to do them. Okay, so we're gonna do some posture. I'm gonna do the postural exercises in standing and Katie's gonna show the modified version in sitting. You can also do these, of course, standing with support of a chair in, in front of you or beside you or a counter. These exercises could be done with some resistance. So we like to use resistance bands for these, but you could also use a set of light free weights would also work. So, or nothing. You'll still benefit from doing, moving through these motions without any resistance. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the band and we're gonna stand in a hip distance apart. Your arms come up, thumbs can go up and you're just gonna pull, well, this is a lot of resistance. You're gonna pull your elbows out. Keep a soft bend of the elbows. We're gonna do 10 of these. Pull the band to your chest. Two, three. Squeezing between your shoulder blades, that's four. Try not to elevate your shoulders, that's five, six. Keep those motions big, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good. We're gonna do two other exercises and then we're gonna come back to that one. Now we're gonna do a similar motion, but we're gonna move in a diagonal. So you're gonna start with the band in a diagonal position and you're gonna pull apart. That's one. Two, stay nice and lifted in your sternum. Three, four, Five, six, this should not cause any shoulder pain. If it does, go ahead and use no resistance or weight. Eight, 
maybe eight, nine, <laughs> ten. Good, and rest down. And now let's do the other side. I'm gonna show this next version with no resistance, um, just so you can see. Ready? I'm gonna pull one. And I'm squeezing my shoulder blades. Two. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Beautiful. The next exercise we're going to do is great to strengthen your posterior chain or your low back, your spine, and your extensor muscles around the hip. So I'm going to have Katie demonstrate this from a side view. This is called a hip hinge. Again, you can do this with a small set of weights. You don't need to. Your, your body weight is enough to benefit from this exercise. So the hip hinge, you're going to go a little wider than hip distance apart so you're nice and stable. A soft bend at the knees, but the knees are not going to bend more throughout the exercise. You're going to hinge forward, keeping a nice flat back. See Katie's nice flat back, and then you're going to come up. You only go as far as comfortable for you. This is two and three. You're sticking your bottom out as you go back. You're pulling your hips forward as you come up. We're at five, possibly six. I'll get my left and right wrong the entire six. time. So if you don't count right, it's okay. We'll figure it out together. Seven, sometimes only nine, sometimes 11, eight. <laughs> But you'll get a good workout. That's all that matters. Yeah. Ten. Yeah. No one suffered from one rep or two <laughs> many or two less. Okay. Great. So we're going to repeat those exercises. So we're going to start with that pull apart. Now, for this round, if you'd like to incorporate a little bit of a balance challenge, um, feel free to change your base of support here. So rather than standing with feet apart, you could try this next round where we do those same exercises with your feet together. You want to still maintain that nice upright posture, shoulders back. I'm going to do this one with some light weights and we'll begin. One, two, squeezing those shoulder blades together, three, nice big motions, four, feel free to go at your own speed. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Nice job. We're going to switch the di diagonals again. Let's start. And yeah, let's do. <laughs> we'll do what we did. Got it. I'm with you. One, two. Using weights versus bands changes the muscles you use a little bit but all good postural exercises. Let's go with five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, and rest. All right, and begin again. We'll do the other side, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. And we're going to go back to the hip hinge. This time I'm going to show it with a band. So many people have bands at home. So I'm going to show you how you might do it with a band. You can put the band under your feet, hold on to either end of the band. Again, you don't need a band, you don't need weights, but this is just another option to try if you have it handy. And you're going to come forward and up. My back is staying completely straight. That's two. Only movement is happening at my hip joint. And three. I like to think about pushing the floor away to get back up, not pulling, but pushing right here. Okay. 
six, seven. If you're using a band, try to resist the urge to pull your shoulders up. Eight, nine, and 10. Good. Nice job, everyone. All right. Should we go for one more round of those? Yeah, you want to do it? Yep. All right. Let's do it. All right, we're going to do one more round. Again, if you'd like an, an extra challenge, you can do the feet together. You can also change the position of your feet into more of a staggered stance. Try to find the center between your two feet and let's begin. Or it's totally fine to start with the where we began. If, uh, if challenging your balance doesn't feel right at this point. Starting out here and we're going to pull one, two, Again, this is strengthening the muscles around our shoulder blades. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice job, everyone. Just like with Parkinson's, sometimes people may notice that with time, your handwriting gets smaller. Sometimes when you exercise, the motions and the reps, your movements get smaller. So be really aware, since you're not right in front of us, be really aware that as you move into further reps of an exercise that you're not losing that great big motion. It can, it can happen easily. Okay. I'm gonna switch my feet into a, just to show you, they're staggered like that. What? Nice big motions. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. As you fatigue, watch those shoulders are coming up towards your ears. Eight, nine, and ten. All right, nice job. Last diagonal. I'm going to switch my feet again. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Beautiful. Well, we're all, all done with our pull aparts. Now we have one last hip hinge to do. And I'm gonna actually show you, I'm showing you with the bands, I'm showing you with the weights. Another option to make it a little more challenging is to put the hands behind the head because we're bringing more weight further away from our hinge point. So I'm gonna show you that I have my fingertips very gently resting on the back of my head, certainly not pushing my head forward in any way. My knees are slightly bent. Wide, core is in. Core is in, wide stable stance. And let's begin. We're hinging forward. One, two, three, four. Sometimes it helps to squeeze your buttock muscles, five, as you come up. Six, seven. Eight, nine, and 10. Nice job, everyone. All done with our postural muscles exercise. Grab a sip of water for a moment. <coughs> and we are all gonna find our way back to a chair. <coughs> so find a nice sturdy place to sit. And we'll come back when she's ready. <laughs> we'll get started with some sit to stand. So we're gonna do a series of sit to stands. So sit to stands are basically a squat. So, you know, just like going to the gym and using a barbell, getting out of the chair is the same movement pattern and the same muscles you'd use for a squat. So they're really, really important, not only for strength development, but also for maintaining your functional mobility, your ability to rise up and keep your balance. So we're going to start with a variation on a power move. So it's the power up, but from the chair. So I want you to first to reach forward as far as you can, and then push nice and strong, open up those arms. 
Reach forward again, sit back down, nice and controlled. We're gonna go for 10. One. <laughs> we almost lost her. Two. But she didn't miss a beat. Look at that. Three. Nice and big. Four. If you feel like it's heavy, think about jumping out of the chair. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Two more. Nine, one more, and 10. And sit down, take a breath. <laughs> so just as important getting out of the chair is, getting your balance at the very top is just as critical. So we're gonna practice a little variety. This time, as we stand up, if you wanna use the chair in front of you in case you need a little bit of support. Sure. All right. So if you need a little bit of help, have a chair in front of you. We're gonna stand up, Reach for the ceiling up on our toes and then come back down. Ready? One, up on toes, back down. Two, three, four, five. Six, it's okay to use a little momentum. Seven, eight, nine, one more, and 10. Beautiful. Take that breath. We'll rest a little bit. The other thing we see frequently as physical therapists, and if you've ever been to PT, you've probably heard this before, is people have a hard time returning back to the chair with control. So they might be fine at standing up, but when it comes time to sit, they are whew, into the chair. So we're gonna practice a drill designed to work on that control. So for this round, you can stand up whatever way you want. You can use that arm swing. You can have arms on your chest. You can reach. But when we go to sit down, I want you to pause before you sit. So we're gonna stand up, but then we're gonna come down, just hold for one, two, and back down. Ready? Up, back down, try to pause, and land. Two. Three. Four. This one gets a little sore. Keep working. Five. Six. Don't forget the pause. Seven. Eight. Nine. And just for fun on this last one, Let's try to hold a little longer, ready? One, two, three, don't fall, Tammy. Four, <laughs> five, six. Beautiful. Take a breath, have some water. We got one more round of sit to stands. It's gonna give me another coughing fit. <laughs> <laughs> Few nice deep breaths. One more round. So this time we're gonna focus on what happens when we sort of shift weight when we stand up. So again, you can stand up with your hands on your thighs, you can reach, you can do your crosses, whatever you wanna do. But as you come up, we're gonna jab and come back and then sit down, okay? Watch out for your neighbors if you're near anybody. You ready? To the right, one, two, Three, four, five. Don't be afraid to turn on that foot. Six, seven, eight, nine. One more. Ten. Beautiful. 
Take about 30 seconds off, maybe a minute. We'll see how we're doing. Take some breaths, have some water. We're gonna switch it to high gear and do some high intensity work. So take a minute to rest. I'm gonna get my timer set up. And we are gonna use the power moves for our high intensity work. If I can get my timer out. All right. So we're gonna do our standing power moves. We're gonna work for 40 seconds and then we're gonna rest or do an active recovery for 20 seconds. So the power moves in standing, very similar to the seated ones. This is the power up, I'll show you all four first. And do you wanna do the seated version? Sure. So you can do these seated with Tammy or standing with me, totally your choice. So the power up or the seated power up. The power rock in standing is a little bend of the knees. We're gonna rock and reach, come back to the center, rock and reach. Just like that. The twist, same as sitting, arms are nice and wide. We're gonna twist, open. See how I'm turning on my feet? Just like that punch we did for the sit to stance. Good. And the power step is gonna be a little get ready. Big step out and back. Out and back. All right, we're gonna get started. Take one more sip of water. Dry my face because I'm working up a sweat. And we'll get started. Let's go, first round. Go ahead, start your power ups, whatever version you like. You can either work on control or you can work on speed, your choice. This is meant to be hard. So whatever makes you work harder, that's what I want you to do. Halfway there. Ten seconds. Almost there. Three, two, and one. You can either rest or if you want to keep working, march it out. Getting ready to rock. Three, two, one. Rock and reach. Try and watch your hands as you reach. If you feel comfortable, pick up the speed. Almost there. Five more seconds. And take your break. March it out or sit and rest. Let your heart rate come back down a little bit. This Tabata approach to exercise is great for people who aren't good at counting repetitions. Yes, <laughs> like us. Get ready to twist, nice wide feet. And open, good. When we do these in my Parkinson's class, we do it to good music, which I highly recommend at home. Nice fast beat music. My favorite song to do this to is Queen. Another one bites the dust. If you're looking for a good soundtrack. Gives you a nice beat to work from. 10 more seconds. Three, two, one. Woo. Take your break, march it out, whatever feels good. I like that you mentioned music, Katie, because yes. I think people with Parkinson's often respond so well to an external rhythm and it helps with movement. It doesn't work in a Zoom class like this, so it can be a little distracting, but. Get ready to step. 
What you can do if you save this recording is put on music in the background. That's a nice way to do it from home. And ideally, you want to look for songs that have about 100 beats per minute. It's a little tricky to figure out, but there are playlists. If you look on Spotify or iHeartRadio, whatever you use, that are specific 100 beats, 110 beat music songs. Almost there, five more seconds. And rest. 20 seconds, march it out. I'm gonna make myself a little more room here. We're gonna start stepping different motions for the second four rounds here. So we're gonna go forward back steps. In three, two, you don't have a choice. Yep, forward and back. Forward and back. So it's a variation on your power step. Just move it in a different plane. And you can see us kind of figure out as we go different ways to do this. Nothing is wrong, right? Any way you're moving is a good way to move. And this is a fast paced class. So if you need breaks, feel free to take them. Five more seconds. And march it out 20 seconds or just take your breaths, take a break. We're gonna step to the side this time, over to the right. Five seconds, get ready. Three, two, one. Big step out to the right, big step back. Don't be afraid to put a little bend in your knee and then a nice big push back to standing. This is that big amplitude, big push that we all really need. Think about opening those fingers wide as you stretch those arms out. 10 more seconds on this side. Three, two, one. Take your break, march it out. Ten more seconds, then we're moving back. We're stepping backwards, reaching forwards. Three, two, one. Big step back, like push the world away. Like you're casting a spell on somebody right in front. Good. Make sure you're breathing. Halfway there. I'm going to switch directions so my other arm gets some reaching in. Good idea. Five more seconds. One more side left after this. And march it out. Last round, we're heading the other direction. This is where that left and right gets very confusing on Zoom. So whatever direction you didn't do, do it this time. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Big step, open wide, push back up. Looking good. If we talk less, because we're working hard, just like you guys. <laughs> Catch an art breath here. 15 seconds left. Whew. Almost there. Three. Two, one. Last 20 seconds to march or sit and rest. I'll be the example of sitting and rest. <laughs> 10 more seconds. Three, two, one. Take a break. 
I'm going to turn it over to Tammy for a few minutes. We're going to work on some balance. Nice job, everyone. We have uh, about eight, eight or so minutes left. Yeah, 15 minutes left. So we're just going to, this is sort of part of a cool down, and we're also going to think about balance. So we're going to reset our balance and posture right now. Now that we're all warmed up and we've kind of moved through all the big joints in our body and used all our major muscle groups, I want you to take a moment stand with your feet about hip distance apart and I want you to kind of push into your toes maybe rock a little bit and try to find where your body is centered your the center of your max goes into your feet so sort of in the arch of your feet sometimes we have a tendency to lean back too far on our heels or maybe be too far forward so try to find that middle ground in your feet we're going to work our way up Nice, strong, straight legs. Think about bringing your knees and your hips over your ankles. And then just a very gentle, slight pelvic tilt, possibly a little activation of our uh, deep muscles and our abdominals. So squeezing in there. Now think about lifting your ribs almost up and off away from your pelvis. So lifts up, take a couple nice deep breaths. As we move up our chain, you're gonna bring your shoulders back and down, open up your hands by your side. Think about squeezing your shoulder blades together down your back. And as the very last step, think about elongating your back of your neck, your cervical spine. That's gonna bring you into a little bit of a chin tuck. Imagine pulling the back of your head up. And that is kind of our neutral posture. We aim to have the ears in line with the shoulders and the weight sort of evenly distributed left and right and in the center of our feet. And then this is often called mountain pose in yoga. Um, and it's a great way to reset your posture. If you find yourself throughout the day coming forward, if you feel like your head tends to be forward, you can always do this um, against a wall. Say, yeah, right here, I'll take the wall. Yeah. And it, so it's a, it's a great exercise during the day to check in with your posture. Um, from this point, we're going to try to stay in this nice centered position that we just created for ourselves and work a little bit on some single leg stance. I'll make sure you can see my feet here. So we're going to start the most modified version of this is with a chair or and with a kickstand in your foot. So let's just start with the kickstand. So as we start here, make sure that the whole system didn't kind of fall down, that we just worked on to get up and nice and tall. So kind of go back to where we were. If you're ready for it, you can go ahead and lift that foot off the ground. Certainly hold on to something if that's right for you. Otherwise you can hold this. We'll take some nice deep breaths, check in with your posture. If your foot is going like this, wobbling back and forth, that's good. Your body's working hard to maintain your posture. That's great. Maintain your balance, sorry, and posture. Nice, all right, and put that foot down, shake it out. You should feel a lot of energy in that standing leg. We're gonna switch sides, starting on that right leg. Kickstand your left toe, hold on to a chair if needed. Katie nicely is showing the wall in back of her and the chair in front of her. You can also use a corner. And we're gonna go ahead and if that's where you wanna stay, stay there, focus on keeping your posture. Otherwise you can lift that leg and hold here. Nice deep breaths in and out. Can you breathe, stay upright and stand on your own leg? It's good. Nice, a couple more deep breaths and relax. Great job, shake it out. Now we're gonna add a little movement to our, make it a little more dynamic. So we're gonna use a clock. I'm gonna use these cones so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm gonna start with my, that's a little ambitious. Okay, so I'm gonna start with one, my left, standing on my left leg. I'm gonna to touch forward. You can't see that cone. I'm gonna to touch a cone forward, that's 12 o'clock. Touch to my side, that's three o'clock, and touch and back, that's six o'clock. So we're gonna do a few rounds of that. You don't need a target, you can just do the a few inches in front of you and to the side, hold on to a chair if you need to. 
We're back on this left leg. Posture check. Everything's nice and tall. We haven't fallen into our hip. So 12, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock. If this is difficult for you, you can just go ahead and step and not do a tap. Step front, side, and back. Let's do a few more rounds. Standing on that leg front, side, back. That's two. Front, side, back. That's three. One more, and then we'll switch sides. And that's good. Great job, everyone. I'm just going to switch my target here. Move a little bit back. All right, now we're standing on the right leg. We're going to start with 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Nice job, everyone. Let's do two more. 3 o'clock. Six o'clock, check in, make sure you're nice and tall, symmetrical as possible. Is that two more? Uh, there's that counting problem of mine. There we go. Okay, so that, those are, that's a series you can do to work on standing on one leg. You know, physical therapists love to test our ability to stand on one leg. You can wow any physical therapist by being able to work on that. All right. Three more minutes. We're yeah, let's, let's, do the, down. let's do the cool down. All right. Grab a seat. Hopefully you guys had some fun and you feel like you got a good workout with us. And just as important it is to get strong and to do these high intensity exercises, it's just as important to take some time at the end to cool it down and to bring everything back. So go ahead, hands on your knees, scoot a little forward in the chair. We're gonna take some cat cows. So we're gonna breathe in and arch, look up. That's actually great, Kenny. Thank you for going sideways. Breathe out, round down. We're gonna take three. And down. One more. And down. And then walk those feet together, knees together. We're gonna take some good spinal twists. So hand opposite knee, deep breath in. Breathe out as you turn, look behind you, and come back. Three on each side. One more. And switch to the other leg. Hand across, deep breath in. And three. Good, we'll do one of my favorites. Place those hands nice and flat on your seat. Tuck your fingertips underneath your rear. If you can't quite make it there, just hold onto the seat underneath you. We're gonna finish up with a couple of nice deep breaths. As you breathe in, I want you to puff your chest out as far as you can. Think about feeling into the bases of your lungs. Ready, deep breath in. And let it all out. Two more. And out. One more. And out. Finally, deep breath in, reach up. Let those arms sit wide, look up at the sky. And repeat, in and up. Out. One more. And out. And give yourself a big hug. <laughs> Straighten your shoulders and relax. Nice. We hope you guys enjoyed it. I think we have time for a few questions. If they're in the chat, I will let um, our friends at the Parkinson's Foundation take back over. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tammy and Katie, and all of you guys who joined us today. Um, I hope that your posture, your strength and mobility uh, was extensively utilized and, and strengthened, of course. So I hope you, you really thoroughly enjoyed today's session. Um, if there isn't any questions, um, or at this time, if you guys want to take a time to submit your questions through the chat function, uh, I'll wait uh, a couple minutes to see if any come in and we can direct them to our instructors. Um, I also want to take this time to remind you guys again for our next live uh, Fitness Friday is scheduled August 18th.
Um, so we just got a message from Donna Smith. Thank you, ladies. Great class. Thank you so much for that positive feedback. That's always helpful. And we much appreciate those uh, comments. So I appreciate you sharing that, Donna. Thank you so much. Thanks, um, Donna. Yes, absolutely. And so again, just a reminder, our next Live Fitness Friday is scheduled August 18th. Um, you can visit and see more information at, on our website at parkinson.org diagonal PD health. So with that, I hope you guys enjoy your Friday and please remember to uh, connect back with us uh, for other webinars and opportunities. Oh, we just got one more, one question and uh, from Alana Moser. Uh, Tammy, did I meet you or did you answer the phone when I came to uh, for WIP PD study? <laughs> I can't reveal that, but it's highly likely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was probably Kevin. <laughs> okay. Well, I love the connection and I love the familiar uh having people, you know, familiarize themselves from other instances. So this is what makes our Parkinson community. So again, um, we want to thank you guys all for joining us and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Bye for now. <laughs>